I'm loving it. Cabana, 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 game changer. You ever heard someone call a cardigan sexy? <laughs> Hello there, I'm Nora, and you're watching, also known as Nora Knits. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with me for another podcast episode today. I feel like things are in a little bit of a chaotic state over here, but I'm pretty excited about it anyway. As I'm entering this podcast, I feel like I don't really know if we're going to be here for like 15 minutes or an hour. So we shall find out. I don't really have any other introductions for you today, so let's just go ahead and dive on in. I will say that if you are eager to find out how my dad's sweater fared in blocking, you're going to have to wait another week. I just don't have the space to like physically block out multiple garments at once. We have like one room where I can really sacrifice floor space without, you know, like walking over knits in my living room. So that's kind of the one area where I like to keep all of that. And so basically I can't block one project until the previous one is all dry and ready to go. So my dad's sweater is still a little bit damp on the blocking mats, but definitely then next week we will have a completely finished garment for his sweater. So definitely stay tuned until next week if you were eager to see, like I am, how that turned out. I am getting just a little bit nervous. I keep second guessing as I walk past it and I look up like, is that too big? Is it the right size? As of right now, my prediction is that the body is actually like spot on, but I think that the sleeves might be a little too long. So we'll see. <laughs> we will find out as I'm filming this. My dad's birthday is a week and a day from today. So yeah, definitely by the next time we chat, I should have the finished object photo and we'll probably be then gifting it to him on his birthday. So hopefully I can at least include like a little, I don't know, photo or something in that. <laughs> so that's where we're at with dad's sweater. Let's go ahead and brush on past that. The next thing that I want to update you on is my muscle burra that I knit for my boyfriend using Hedgehog Fibers Skinny Singles in the colorway Orca. I finished this last week, but I had not yet blocked it. So I just wanted to chat really quick about that process. So I have the hat here. It has been hanging out as I did tell my boyfriend to hold off from using it for just until I could film this video, but it is all blocked. The first thing that I want to note about the blocking process with this yarn is that it totally softened it up and all of the, it's a single ply yarn. And originally when I knit this, the stitches had this texture to them that was not, it, it wasn't like abrasive, but you could definitely, when you were um, feeling the fabric, you could feel the individual stitches there. And so I was hoping that it would block out in such a way that that all kind of smoothed out and it totally did. So I love the fabric on this. It's very soft. It has that bit of fuzziness to it. And I'm sure that this is going to look worn very quickly, but really that's okay as long as it is comfortable. The other thing was that I did want to say that when I blocked this, I did not experience a ton of color um, leaking into the water. I was nervous that that would be the case because when I started knitting this project, my hands would literally turn black while I was working on it. However, as I continued to knit on it, that wasn't happening as much. And then I really did not see too much, um, what is that called? <laughs> I don't know. It, it didn't really turn the water. So I was very pleased with that. I know someone who knows way better than I do had mentioned, I think they called it croaking on your hands. So I'm assuming that that means that there's some sort of something going on with like the oils of your hands and then the, the dye in the yarn itself. So 
totally fine. I know that these things are to be expected. I just like to share my experience. So if you feel like you're having that thing too, then you know you're not the only one. So that is where we're at with the yarn. As far as the blocking goes, I do have the before and after measurements to give you. But I want to let you know up front that it still did not totally block out as long as I wanted it to be. It definitely still is not a hat that my boyfriend can comfortably wear with the brim folded up. And you can even tell here, when I fold it up to like a, a normal, a proportionate fold, it really does, it looks short <laughs> this way. So for him to wear this, with zero slouch in the crown and cover his ears with a folded brim, it literally has to be folded like an inch and then it just kind of looks funny. And it's also then sits a little weird. It's just not totally right. So he has been wearing it, The you know, when I had him try it on, he is wearing it just unfolded up. And that's giving him a tiny bit of slouch in the crown, which he doesn't really prefer, but we both decided it looked really good on him. <laughs> so we're happy with that. Overall pleased with the outcome, but a little disappointed that it isn't what I wanted it to be. And I've had a lot of people reach out and say, you know, don't give up on the muscle burr pattern. There's so many factors that go into it. And I'm certainly not giving up on it. I'm, I'm not knitting it again anytime soon just because I want to try other hat patterns. But I, I am curious to know if you've managed to get, and this was the adult size large, on a nine stitch per inch gauge. So if you have knit this pattern and you've been able to get a full size hat that folds up at a proportionate, you know, amount, knitting at a similar situation, fingering weight yarn, adult size large. Can you let me know what yarn maybe you, you used for that? Because I'm, I'm wondering if perhaps this particular yarn just didn't quite have the yardage that another fingering weight yarn might have. And I haven't done any digging into this. This is literally me theorizing on the spot here just because I am. I am still a little bit disappointed by it. But we really love the color. We really love the look of it. And it'll serve a purpose for him in in the way that it's going to work for just like more fall weather. Definitely, it's not quite warm enough for a winter hat. He's still been wearing the hat that I knit him as my literal first ever knit project as his winter hat because it's just super thick and super, super warm and a little too big. So that's where we're at on this. At this point, I will have posted the finished measurements on the screen here so that you can see the difference in how much it grew. I just know that it wasn't enough. <laughs> so I won't bore you with all of those details. You can go ahead and read that on the screen. And I am just happy to say at this point that this is a finish, uh, officially a finished object and it's totally done out of my mind now. So that's the muscle burrette. That's where we're at by Zolda Teague, of course. I find it really interesting that in my 2024 sort of knitting intentions and goals, my plan was really to do my best to whittle down the whips. I feel like at the beginning of 2023, being a very brand new knitter, it was even not, it was never even an idea to knit more than one thing at once because that would just not be enough. Like, I, I don't have that wherewithal. And then as the year went on, I sort of was finding that stock and net was maybe not engaging enough to have as a monogamous project. And then cabling was maybe a little bit too involved to have as a monogamous project. And so I was trying to find a balance of those sorts of things between the boring and simple and mindless knitting, and then the engaging, challenging, slow-moving process, intentional knitting. I've really been working on trying to find a balance, and it feels like every week I think, oh, this will be the way that I'm going to do that. And I still don't think I've totally figured that out yet. The latest that I stated I was trying to do 
was have no more than two whips going at once, one being a garment, one being an accessory, and one of those each would have to be the engaging and then the mindless. And I've been very loose with that as I've been coming out of having multiple projects. I'm still trying to tie up loose ends. And so I, I didn't want to hard and fast on that. I just know that that's what I'm working towards. So it feels a little bit funny that at this point I'm like, okay, so we have, that's the finished object, the muscle burra. My dad's ha uh, sweater is basically a finished object, but I still have to put in the zipper and we'll have to see if I have to make adjustments. So that's still a whip in my mind. And then I have a few more now. <laughs> well, okay, that's, that's wrong. Because of everything sort of being done at the same time, it then turned into me needing another project just to sort of get me by. And somehow that has become now another finished object for this week. So the project that I told you about last week in the podcast that I had just cast on as sort of a palette cleanser as a way to entertain myself while the course having cardin was still cardin? <laughs> the course having cardigan was still drying. It's winter. Um dad sweater needed to be blocked. The muscle burn needed to be blocked. Everything was just so in that in-between stage. So I decided I would cast on the Boulevard bag by Lily Kate Makes, Lily Kate France. And I finished that yesterday. So here it is. <laughs> now, because of all of my blocking situations, I, I never wound up blocking this. And I do think that it could benefit from even a steam block just to kind of even everything out. But it's a bag. And I do figure that as I put things in here, it's going to fill out the shape anyway. And it'll wind up getting kind of stretched out. I'm not too concerned about it. But this was a project that wound up taking me a total of seven days. And that's largely because of the fact I did not knit the strap that goes along with this. So if you didn't know already, this is the Boulevard bag by Lily Kate France, like I said. And it is a fully knit crossbody bag that includes this double knit strap as well as this little crescent moon shaped purse and you are intended to sew a zipper into the top of it and then the strap typically would go on. I decided not to knit the strap for mine so all I had to knit was this little bag and it really did work up so quickly. It's done in two halves and honestly the knitting was done in a matter of like three days and it was just the rest of the finishes that it took me some time to wait for them to come in as I had to order some things. And then just, you know, it's like weaving and ends. That was really what I was doing the rest of the time. So about a week to, to knit this, I think, is a very fair amount of time if you're going to do like I did. So I'll explain what I've done. I knit this in my mystery thrifted boucle. I know that it's a mohair silk boucle and this gorgeous fuchsia magenta hot pink color and I've done the channels here that she the, the tucks in a discontinued yarn that was also thrifted Barocco Lux in a black color and the Lux is a cotton viscose something or another blend it has this roughness to it I don't know if you can hear that, but this is what it sounds like when I pet the mohair. <laughs> and then this is what it sounds like when I pet the Barocco locks. <laughs> Does that give you an idea of how rough it is? <laughs> so I didn't know what I wanted to use it for anyway. I was glad to find a project that I could incorporate it into. Overall, the yarn for this project has cost me less than $4 as the entirety of each of these skeins cost $4 and I did not even wind up using all of it. I do regret that I didn't weigh my yarns beforehand and... So I actually don't know exactly how much of each of the yarns I used, but I know it was not a lot. 
For the boucle, I held my yarn double, and this was knit on four millimeter needles at a very dense gauge, which is why, like I said, I'm getting this sort of like bubbling. It's not bothering me. I'm really not concerned about it. And the tucks were knit with the same needles. And then basically last week I had finished one of the halves and I just started the other. So you, you essentially kind of knit from where the zipper would go down the tuck, down the bag, you come back and do this tuck, and then you kind of knit the um, half of this gusset portion. And you do that twice, and then it's three needle bind off, sewn together, and then you go ahead and add the zipper. I wound up purchasing a zipper from Joann's, and this is a nine inch zipper, and I went with this one because it had the gunmetal zipper metal that I was going for with the rest of this bag. And then because I didn't want a double knit button or a double knit strap, I, I felt like this bag needed a bit of hardware. I wound up purchasing this chain purse strap on Amazon and it actually came with this little leather tassel, which I just thought was a fun touch. And then I also purchased these gunmetal D-rings. And so what I had done was follow the tutorials provided in the pattern for assembling the purse portion. And at that point, each of the corners were not attached in the tucks. That was something that I had to go back. And I just was weaving in the ends and sort of grafting them together, but I didn't do it in any sort of tidy way. Also, that was all after stuffing each of these channels with zip ties, which I didn't have long enough zip ties to stuff in there, so I wound up having to purchase some. And I think each of these channels has about six zip ties inside of it, which I feel like is a lot, but she said just stuff in as many as you can, and that's what's really helping it to hold its shape. And so once those were in there, I went ahead and just grafted it. I mean, very sloppy, but you really can't tell. Um, all of the corners together. I hand sewed in the zipper. I actually, both because I didn't want the boucle to interfere with the zipper, but also because I kind of just liked the idea of seeing the black zipper tape, I left a little bit more space than I normally would have for the zipper. And I, I just did nothing fancy. I used some pink uh, thread to match the boucle. And I just hand sewed that in. I, I really didn't do anything fancy. The one thing that I would say is that when I was sewing some of these that were a little bit closer to the, the teeth of the zipper, I just used my thread to sort of grab a few loops of the boucle and tack them down away from the mouth of the zipper so that they wouldn't hopefully interfere. And the inside of this is not pretty. <laughs> it is not lined. And I did not take any special precautions because I did use that pink red. It is super visible how sloppy my stitches is. Stitches are on the black zipper tape, but I thought if it really bugs me, I could always put some bias tape on there and sew that down. But for now, it doesn't bug me at all. And this thing is surprisingly roomy. I was able to fit like a few balls of yarn in here. <laughs> plus my phone. So I definitely feel like it's a great little on-the-go bag. I love bags this size. I love the metal of the zipper and then having this little tassel just made it a lot easier even to pull it closed. And then the purse strap, I purchased this one, like I said, that has these lobster clasps on the ends and then the D-rings. So all I did to manage the D-rings, because that's not normally part of the pattern as it is just a sewn on double knit button band, oh, button band, my gosh, <laughs> double knit strap. I simply took a couple D-rings and the black Barocco Lux and a crochet hook and I did a series of single crochets around the flat bar of the D-ring. I think I wound up doing seven and then I left a long tail and used that tail to simply sew it to the edges made in between these two corners of the bag. If I were to do this again, I probably would have just purchased bigger D-rings because the ones that I got are one inch and I, I'm not crazy about the fact that I left these sort of gaps 
in between the black tuck, the, you know, boucle, D-ring, D-ring, boucle, black tuck. I wish that maybe the black channel sort of continued along the way, but it's, it's fine with me that it doesn't. Like, that's totally fine. <laughs> and these are super, super, super secure. I'm not concerned about them the, at all. And then what was really cool about this strap in particular is that it has a leather portion for your shoulder to make that more comfortable on your shoulder, of course, so that you don't just have the chain on there. And then it has the gunmetal chain, like I enjoy. That's my preferred metal for my bags. And then the lobster claw on the end. So I can wear this purse a few different ways. One of them, and I'll, I'll do my best to kind of model this, but one of them is just by utilizing the full length of the strap and attaching the lobster claws to each of the D-rings. Another, though, is that I could loop the chain through the D-ring, pull it out, and then secure it back to itself, and that would give me the look more like Lily Kate has in her photos, where the purse is sitting on her chest, sort of, her torso. And then the way that I think I'm most likely going to use it is by doing that where I put the chain through the D-ring, loop it back on itself, and reattach it, but only on one side. And that gives me a good length of purse where I feel like it's nice and snug to me. It's not too low where it's flopping around as it is, I think, with the longest form of the chain, um, but it's at a nice, comfortable height. But I really like the fact that I have complete custom ability and options for this. So if I was traveling and was in a city or something and really wanted my bag close to me, I could utilize the shortest strap. And then if I'm going for something a little bit more casual and wanted to utilize the longest option, I can. So this was really fun to me. I Honestly, after having knit this the way that I did, I'm not sure that I would ever even bother knitting the strap because I feel like the versatility of this is just too much fun. And honestly, if I were to, if at some point I felt like the metal was maybe too severe, which is exactly why I chose metal because <laughs> I wanted something to roughen this pink fuzzy bag up. I could essentially just purchase a couple of lobster clasps and knit the double knit strap, attach it to D rings, and then add the clasps so that I could have even multiple straps for this. I just love the versatility of this. Um, it makes it more functional for me. So I'm thrilled with this project. I'll probably just give it a quick little steam block at some point when it really bugs me, but for now, I'm happy that it's done, and it was a perfect palette cleanser project, and um, I couldn't recommend it more. It was a great pattern. It was very fun, a quick knit. If you're in the need for just something, a refresher, I definitely, definitely recommend this pattern. So that's the Boulevard Bag by Lily Kate France. This took a full week to complete, <laughs> really just a few days to knit, but I will include all the time that it took. And everything included, that's the yarn, the zipper, the zip ties, and the strap. This project total came out to $36.95. And that was with the pattern being gifted to me. So thank you so much to Tracy who gifted me the pattern, but that was how much I wound up spending on this whole project. So with the pattern, it would have been more like $40. I'm thrilled. I think it's going to be a great little pop of color for my wardrobe. And yeah, again, couldn't recommend it enough. So like I was saying before, I know that this all seems a little bit counterintuitive to my intentions to only have two whips at a time, although I guess now I do. And it does sort of fit my, my plans, but I will show you the first whip, which you've seen before, and then the second one that you have not. <laughs> So first off, let's go ahead and talk about my Corsavin cardigan by Tanya Hodney that I am knitting out of Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool in the colorway oatmeal. This is a project that has been on my needles now for a whopping 174 days. 
That's right. This is the project that has just continuously fallen to the back of the whips and it's time for it to have its moment. <laughs> so I am so excited to share with you that I have indeed started my double knit button band on this cardigan. And the reason I feel like I had put this off for so long is because I'd never done a double knit button band before. I've certainly made modifications to patterns in the past, but typically it's been in the way of sort of omitting things and not adding things. So this pattern is written to have a ribbed button band on it, and I have knit this pattern once before doing exactly that. And I felt like for this version, I wanted to have something that was more streamlined, more clean, more classic. And therefore, I decided to figure out how to knit a double knit button band. At this point, I think it's safe to say that I'm actually exactly halfway through that button band. I don't even know how to hold this. Let's go ahead and just show you like this. You can see here. Here she is. <laughs> I'm so happy with how this is working up, but also just enjoying the process of knitting this button band. The side that you're looking at is my right, and it includes the holes for the buttons that will be going on the other side. There we go. And yeah, I am just so in love with this right now. So this is kind of heavy to hold up. Where do I even start? So this cardigan is knit bottom up in this basket weave texture, and then it features these sort of balloon-like sleeves, but I went ahead and did a tapered sleeve on mine with a longer ribbing that sort of matches the height of the ribbing in the body that I had done. And all of this, like I said, with an intention of this being more of a streamlined classic look for me especially because of the colorway. It just felt like that would make the most sense. So once I had completed the sleeves, I had to block this so that I could get a good button band uh, starting point. Once this was blocked, which by the way, when I blocked it, I really was focusing on just kind of making sure that my basket weave was lining up so that I wasn't stretching one side more than another. I really, that was my main focus. And I did not bother at all with like doing anything about the sleeves. So those definitely at this point still need to be properly shaped in their, in their final blocking. But once I had this finally dry and ready to go, I followed the tutorial that Veronica Lindbergh uses Kutova Kika in her Darling Cardigan tutorial on YouTube to start my button band, which it started with an Italian cast on, which is perfect because that is actually how the ribbing was also, it's a bottom up, that's how it was cast on as well. And my sort of seam or that the point where my button band and the body are, are meeting, there's the slightest bit of a little bit of like distance, a little disconnect, but I'm hoping to just weave in the ends and bridge that gap a little bit better. I decided that for my button bands, I wanted to have about the width of two of these basket weaves. So you can see here that we have the basket weaves kind of both going in their, in their columns. And so I really wanted to sort of match that width to have a, a rather substantial button band and something that referred back to the rest of this pattern so that it looked like it was always meant to be there. In order to do that, I cast on 16 stitches for the double knit button band so that once it was actually knit, you'd be looking at eight stitches across. So looking at this, this button band is eight stitches wide, but because we're doing this in double knitting, it is in fact 16 stitches worked. Now, let me put this down for a second because I'm very passionate about sort of easing your mind when you're learning some new techniques, as I'm usually learning them for the first time too. So I really felt like there was a point where I was just putting this off because I was nervous to learn how to do the double knit button band. I thought it was going to be a lot more complicated than it was, but 
Honestly, the Italian cast on was so much easier in this button band than it was for the full circumference of the hem of the sweater because you're working those stitches really on your needle. So it's as if you're doing it on straight needles, which people say is the easier way to do an Italian cast on. So if you've never done an Italian cast on, I might start with something like a button band and it would make you understand what's supposed to be happening and what you're trying to avoid once stitches are floating on a cable. So that was pretty smooth. I did stop and start and stop and start. Um, you know, I had a few false starts and ripped it out and tried again and, you know, back and forth probably five or six times until I was really pleased with how that was all looking. And then essentially the double knit part of this is knitting the knits and then slipping the pearls with your yarn in front. So it's not a scary thing. You know how to do it. Just watch a tutorial, but it can sound very daunting. A lot of people tend to refer to double knitting as knitting everything twice. And I understand that that's what's happening, but it's not this particularly, it's not particularly more laborious than just knitting and purling and knitting and purling. It feels like less work than that. It's just taking longer. I find it to be pretty med meditative because it requires my focus, but it doesn't require thinking. <laughs> like I have to pay attention to it or else I might mess something up, but it's not anything scary or daunting or, or difficult to do. It's just something that I have to focus on. So I enjoy that part of it. And then essentially what winds up happening is you knit and slip your way down one way. And then when you come back and I had picked up the stitches around the opening of the cardigan, you are just knitting together the last stitch of the button band with that stitch that you picked up for the perimeter of the sweater and repeating that over and over. No big deal. Totally doable. The worst part of this was picking up all the stitches for the button band, but I was going to have to do that anyway, even for a ribbed button band. So no big deal there. Now for the buttonholes themselves, based on what I had heard from other people, the tutorial by Kimmy something who does petite knits tutorials was a good one to watch as she has this special way of not breaking the yarn for the button bands. Now, I find that kind of misleading now that I've done it. As you do break the yarn, I guess what I've gathered is that you're not knitting, approaching a buttonhole, breaking the yarn, knitting a buttonhole, breaking the yarn, and then having four ends to weave in, but rather you only have two ends to weave in. It's almost equivalent to knitting, what would I compare it to? Short rows or something where, I mean, you basically just wind up when you, when you approach the, the bottom of your button band, when you, or sorry, your buttonhole, when you reach that point, you wind up just knitting the amount of stitches high or tall that you're going to want your button band to be back and forth on one side and then cutting the yarn and doing the same on the other. Like it's nothing, it's nothing scary. And then once you get to the top, you just continue on knitting, you know, back and forth again. So it all sound, it, it all seemed so intimidating before I did it. And now there was really nothing to be afraid of. So those are my words of wisdom to you. I, as you can probably see, have these green stitch markers here, and that was where I decided I would lay out my buttons. I have four buttons that I'm so excited to put on this cardigan, and this seemed to be the best place for them. So I have one that's going to be kind of in the center of the ribbing at the bottom. So there's Mm, four or five rows beneath that of just standard knitting. And then they're each spaced out, I, th I don't know, two and a half inches or so. And then the last one is really exactly where the V-neck of the cardigan kind of turns. It's just underneath that. So I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just enjoying this so much. I feel like it looks really sturdy. And once this is blocked, I feel like it's going to have just such a nice, I don't know, it looks very luxe to me. I haven't tried this on since I've been doing this. And let me just grab a stitch stopper to put on here so that I don't lose any stitches. 
All right. I have the gnome handy. So he's on there for now. I will leave my double pointed needle that I am using and let's go ahead and try it on. Oh yeah. I, I dropped down to this whole cardigan was knit on 4.5 millimeter needles. The button band, or sorry, the ribbing was knit on four millimeter needles. And so I am also using four millimeter needles for the button band. I'm definitely not wearing the right shirt to wear under this today, but it will have to do. Oh, it feels so good. Oh my gosh, this is my first time trying it on. <laughs> that looks so cool. Stop. It's so hard when you're trying on a cardigan that doesn't have a button band yet to see how things are going to work out because there's so much space left where you're going to have a button band. And so things are just like kind of sliding off of your body and nothing quite looks, you know, just right. But holy cow, is that not so mm, luxe? that quiet luxury look, I feel like is what we've got going on here. It's really not even too bad right now, not having been blocked yet, but after blocking, I think that's going to sit just absolutely perfectly. I love this sort of, it's got like a, you ever heard someone call a cardigan sexy? <laughs> I feel like this little swoop that we're getting here is a rather sexy cardigan swoop. I do think maybe my sleeves are just like a little bit too big and almost like, that's almost what my arm looks like under here, this like little gobble part, but I'm okay with it. Um, it I, I really just want this to look, I don't know, easy. That's what I want it to look like. So I feel like it has that look to it. I think maybe if there was a ton of positive ease up here, like this is where my actual arm is. And then I have maybe two inches total of positive ease under that up here. Maybe it would look kind of bad, but it's really just in the form forearm area where I think I probably could have started decreasing earlier, but I'm okay with that. It doesn't bother me too, too much. And I think once I really lock everything out a bit more, it'll look even better, but I just think this is exactly what I wanted it to be. Let me get close so you can see this button band in all our glory. So I have yet to weave in the ends that I left for those buttonholes. I'll wrap all of that up at the same time once everything else is getting finished up. I know some people will say that my top button is too high. I put it there intentionally, and I did this actually with the first one that I made too, because I do kind of like to wear a v-neck cardigan as a blouse. I like the option for it to be closed a little bit higher than it would be had my buttons started just on the straight edge of the cardigan and not, you know, at the v-neck, but I'm, I'm really fine with the place. The placement of it. So I, I enjoy knitting the double knit button band. I like how substantial it looks and feels. I am so hoping that by the next time we chat, this is done. <laughs> um, it is taking a while, but I, I'm enjoying every moment of it. So I will definitely be knitting a double knit button band again. And I highly recommend those tutorials that I referenced. I'll try to link them in the description so that if you are planning to knit a double knit button band and need some resources to help you along the way, you can check those out too, because I, I did find them very helpful. So that's the course I have in cardigan right now. It's really warm. It's really cozy. And hopefully I'm wearing it in next week's video. If not, hopefully it's just because it's still damp from blocking, but thrilled. So that is the Course Oven Cardigan by Tanya Hodney that has been on the needles for 174 days, but hopefully not more than 180. Fingers crossed. <laughs> so here's the part where I am knitting something. I cast it on that I had absolutely no intention of doing. But I found myself just really needing something that I could knit on and have for me. I knit the sweater for my dad, and that was fun. And I thought that the Boulevard bag would really scratch the itch of having something for myself. And especially knowing that the course haven is going to be done soon, and that's for me too. I have another gift knit that I think I will be doing next. So I figured I would kind of take advantage of this still in between state to cast on something that would be a little bit more simple than my next knit and something that could be for me so that 
when the course oven is done, we can cast on my gift knit and still have this as my more stockinette, simple mindless knitting. So I'm excited about it. <laughs> The pattern that I chose is the Cicla Men sweater by Cecilia Garcia Rodrigo, and it is a very basic v-neck sweater that has these channels of ribbing sort of on the underarm portion. It has a split hem. This just looks cozy, easy breezy, comfortable to me. And I had seen this. I don't even know where. And then this pattern was very generously gifted to me. Thank you so much to Janie for gifting me this pattern. This is just, I mean, mm, I'm loving it. I am knitting this in the Karen Blossom Cakes the color is cabana, cabana, cabana. And I'll tell you more about it in a second. Let me just show you. <laughs> Here we go. Oh my goodness. It's bringing me so much joy. This has been on my needles now for five days. And obviously, I'm very into it because I've just been knitting up a storm. It is a raglan construction top down. And I am going to reach out to the designer. The, the pattern was written in Spanish and it's been translated into English. And I think that there's a few things that maybe aren't totally making sense. And actually, my project on Ravelry was the first one that popped up for this pattern. So I'm going to shoot her a little note and let her know a few little things that just weren't totally clear and a couple little typos and stuff that I found along the way. But if you've, knit a, if you've knit a sweater before, you'll be completely fine to follow this pattern. And I've already seen that she has adjusted some things anyway, so I'm assuming she's going to be receptive to the few things that I found. However, what I really love about this pattern is that she includes for each individual size a spreadsheet of raglan row by row by row how many stitches you should have in each section of the sweater. It's knit in one piece. You're knitting this flat until you get to the end of the v-neck. V -neck. So as you can see, I have just sort of recently joined in the round. But up until that point, you have sort of these sections of the fronts, the sleeves, and then the back. And she breaks down row by row how many stitches you are adding as you're increasing. And so even if you're struggling a little bit to read the instructions of the pattern, that makes it so easy. I thought that was brilliant. It's also really nice for someone who has knit a sweater before and doesn't want all of the fluff to just refer to the, the chart. So it's not charted. It just has a spreadsheet of numbers and it, it's very simple to follow. I've just been crossing them out line by line as I was going through them and that's just through the raglan increasing. So I am now in the round. I have not yet tried this on. I'm not going to today only because I didn't wear something that's really suitable and it is just under the arm right now. So next week we could try this on and it'll really look like something. But what I loved about this sweater versus some other basic knits were the detail of the underarm stitches where you have, you can see just these little bit of um, channels of the pearls and then the, the stockinette. So it's basically like a two by two ribbing under the arm and then that will continue into the two by two split hem. I have had this yarn for a little bit now. I had knit my sister a sweater, the warm-up sweater by Espace Trico in the same yarn in the colorway. Oh, it was like steel or something like that, but it's a bluey sort of tone where mine is more of like a sandy sunset beach <laughs> color. These are so my colors where the blue were so her colors. And I really just wanted us both to have like simple sweaters. I feel like it would be fun to maybe do a little photo shoot of us both in these sweaters. I haven't told her about that yet, but hopefully she's receptive to the idea. And yeah, 
This was in my winter knitting plans. I wanted to knit a basic sweater out of this yarn to sort of replace a simple sweater that I bought literally, I think, over 10 years ago that I love to have as, you know, something to throw in the car in the summer to throw on if it gets chilly when we're out and about at night and something like that. So, so, so simple. It has this striping to it. The yarn is an acrylic and cotton blend and it's in that sort of chainette blown yarn style. So I believe that the cotton content is the chainette itself and then the fibers blown in are acrylic. So it has a little squeakiness to it and whatnot, but for a basic sweater, how nice is it going to be to like not worry about this at all? I had purchased the cakes when they were on sale earlier in 2023, and I've had them hanging out just waiting for the perfect time to cast on, and this seemed right. I am knitting this in the size six, and I think I was kind of in between sizes, and then my gauge is just a little bit off, so I compensated by sizing up, and I'm thinking it's just going to be a big old comfy sweater, sweatshirt vibes. That's what I'm going for with this, so I'm very excited to have it. I don't mind knitting with this yarn, and I am knitting this on five millimeter needles, so it's going nice and fast, and yeah. I've really been trying to prioritize Corsavin and then only work on this when I really need something in the round, TV knitting, those sorts of things, but this is not the main priority. And I think that that's important for me to differentiate in my mind so that I feel organized. So yeah, that's that's where we're at right now. While I have this out, I did just remember that I actually did put a progress keeper on it so that I would remember <laughs> to move said progress keeper. And that way we can see how much progress was made last week. I'm using one of my sweet little gummy bear style ones from Black Pearl Magic. My friend Shayla. Thank you, Shayla. And we're going to pop that bad boy right over here. I also did, to make my life a little bit easier, I put in some stitch markers where I changed to the purling for under the arms so that when I am knitting this mindlessly, I can see exactly where that is. And then I have um, the center line marked out with a little gummy bear here, as I am sure that that's going to come into play when we are doing the split hem. So loving this so far. Like I said, with those few exceptions of just some things that could be more clear in the pattern and um, just a few little little issues. I'm going to reach out to the designer and I am sure that it won't be a problem and I'll let you know if it is. Um, <laughs> but I think this is going great so far. I'm really excited to have it. So Cyclamen sweater by Cecilia Garcia Rodrigo and it's been on the needles for five days. Actually, I will keep this out because I have one little acquisition that I am utilizing on this at the moment. I had a lot of people reach out uh, telling me that to solve my problem that I've been having with my cords, I have the Knitter's Pride Nova Platina interchangeable set. Those are the needles that I'm using at the moment, and I have graduated from the Knit Picks wooden interchangeable needle set. So those are all sort of the same company and all have the same cables, which are these really horrible cables that don't move, they don't bend, they have too much memory to them, and it causes issues not all the time, but sometimes. So a few people recommended that I check out the Knitter's Pride Mindful Collection for the cords as they have swivel cords and the, um, is it a metal interior? And then a nylon coating. And that has been such a lifesaver. So as you can see, I'm twisting my needles here and the cords are swiveling with them. They have a little bit of like a crunchy sound when you do that, but it's not, it hasn't bothered me one bit. They are about $6 a piece, I think $5 on Amazon. I wound up picking them up at a local yarn shop and I'll be purchasing more. I only bought them in two different sizes to see how I'd like them. And I would like to basically replace all the cables that I have. So I'll probably just purchase them as I need them and fill out my set and make some changes because that has been, like I said, game changer. Game changer. So that is my one little acquisition for the week. If you have the Knitter's Pride or the Knit Picks interchangeable needles, then highly recommend the Mindful Swivel Cords. It's just been such a better knitting experience. And we all need that in our lives, right? Whew. That was a lot. <laughs> 
at the moment, that's all I have for you. My plans are to finish the course having cardigan, like point blank, just done. Ideally, it will also have been blocked by the next time we chat. Keep on chugging along on that bad boy. And maybe I should start gauge swatching for the next project. And hopefully I'll have some more to tell you about that next week. In the meantime, <laughs> if you would like more real-time updates, I definitely recommend heading over to Instagram where I tend to be most active in my stories. I love to pose questions and polls and I find it so fascinating the information that you guys have all shared with me. So if you're looking for a little bit more daily interaction, then definitely go hang out with me over there at aka Nora Knits on Instagram. And otherwise, if you enjoyed this video. I would so appreciate it if you could go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe. You can ring the bell so that you're notified when videos just like this one go up. And yeah, just all those things that YouTube really likes. If you did like this style of video and just knitting content in general, I do post podcasts every Saturday morning at 9 30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And with that, you all... Big ol' thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. <laughs> All right, you guys. Bye.